Dominique Foxworth uh, is a man that I admire for many different reasons. And a lot of people admire him because, you know, great football player and Harvard Business School and financial whiz who has had great power in the NFL. But one of the reasons that is at the very top for me is that he tackles the hardest things just because. And so he decided to become a screenwriter. He decided, just on the side, that he was going to do American Sports Story, Aaron Hernandez. He was a staff writer. It uh, begins Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern on FX is the two-hour premiere. He's also got the Dominique Foxworth show, and uh, you should know that that is absolutely worth listening to. He's becoming uncomfortable with how much I'm He's also spectacular him. at yeah. receiving compliments. Yeah, it's he's like, got some damn good looks as well. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer yeah. at receiving compliments. Yeah, no doubt. No one's enjoying this, guys. Like, the listeners aren't, the viewers aren't, I'm not, yeah, you're not. Right. I mean... We had a football weekend, fellas. Well, it was kind of a shitty football professional weekend. And I wanted to ask you, because one of the things that I find super interesting always about sports is how bigger, stronger, faster, and survival of the fittest evolves. And clearly, the defenses are better at making Patrick Mahomes and others throw for 150 yards. They're making offense harder to come by, even though all the rules are set up to favor the offense. What is happening, Dominique, there strategically, that the games yesterday are seven field goals from the commander and the Steelers are 2-0 and with their backup quarterback on the road because Atlanta and Denver can't do anything against them. Yeah, I feel like we've been seeing this evolution kind of take its time and we've finally gotten to a point where it's kind of all coming to a head. But I feel like the bodies, the rules changed. And around the time I was in the league, towards my time out, the rules started to change. The offenses started to get more sophisticated. And now the defense is caught up. And I think the bodies on the defense have caught up in a ways that have made it easier for teams to run the ball, but a lot more difficult for them to pass the ball. And the schemes have kind of caught up with a lot of the simulated pressures. And we saw Spags doing some interesting stuff. Because if you think about from the quarterback standpoint and offensive standpoint, when a blitz is coming, you're lo normally looking for like a topper, someone to replace this person in a blitz. So a safety will go over the top of the nickel if he's going to blitz. And Spags has done this thing where he does this really huge rotation. He's not the only one um, in Kansas City, but lots of teams have done this where they do this rotation in the secondary where the blitz comes from somewhere where you don't expect it because there's no tells in it. And you see that with the simulated pressures where a quarterback will – feel like he's getting blitzed because they're sending a linebacker or a secondary player, but they're dropping other people out on the other side and end up with the quarterback and the offense reacting as if they're getting blitzed, but the defense still having seven or eight guys back in coverage. So I think it's just taking time. We've evolved to a point where the defense has generated an advantage and now the offense will at some point and and we'll keep doing this. That's one of the best things about football. Am I wrong in thinking that the Jags uh, shouldn't have given that money to Trevor Lawrence? He had 16 yards in the third quarter yesterday passing. But not in the third quarter. I tuned into the game in the third quarter, and he had thrown for 16 total yards. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, I wouldn't say that, you, that um, they shouldn't have given the money. Trevor Lawrence is an incredible talent which is always enticing and really hard to find. And when you watch any of his games, you could clip out five to six plays, and it feels like even some of his worst games that just look like he's one of the best quarterbacks in football. The problem is the consistency, the cons consistency throughout a game or throughout an entire season. He hasn't been able to establish that. And up until now, we've been kind of excusing it with coaching issues or receiver drops. But at a certain point, I think we all just have to accept that Something's wrong there, and no matter who they bring into coach or the receivers that they bring in, maybe things will change with uh, Brian Thomas because he's a really impressive young receiver. But it seems like Trevor Lawrence kind of does this hero ball thing as if he's at Clemson at a certain point in the game, and he hasn't gotten to the point where he's comfortable with taking the incomplete pass and moving on and trying to play within structure and only being a hero when you have to be a hero. That's kind of what – um, Josh Allen has struggled with, but the problem with comparing those two is Josh Allen's ceiling is so much higher than Trevor Lawrence has been that he can endure some of the negative plays that uh, Trevor Lawrence hasn't been able to. Dominique, how many of the other paid quarterbacks, you talk about consistency, the reason I get frustrated with Trevor Lawrence is because every game I'm watching four throws that every other quarterback in the league makes, and he's missing them by a lot. And so you're talking about consistency. I don't know how correctable that is because it's every game I'm seeing it. Yeah, and I, that's the thing is – we end up focusing in and highlighting those things and we kind of rewrite or revise our history of a specific game based on like who won or lost. And I think Trevor Lawrence has had 
been on the wrong side of a lot of those games. And he's had enough issues that you can point to him and say it's his fault. But there have been enough problems. Like last year, I think he they kind of set a record for number of drop touchdown passes. So I think that's the problem with Trevor Lawrence is it's the uh, the evaluation has never been completely clear. And I think the final thing we can kind of establish is that he's not a top tier guy, even though he has the top tier ability. He's not that guy, but he's certainly not uh, bad enough that if I was a Jaguars, I'd let him go and go back into the market. Yeah, that, that's and I'm just risk averse in that way. Uh, my reaction and um, I think Mike Ryan might have made fun of me a long time ago because I told the Browns to pay Baker Mayfield. So, like, I always think that if you got a quarterback that's OK, you keep him because I'm scared of what you might end up with. Dominique. It, if you're Shad Khan and Bill Belichick calls you today, what do you do, Dominique? <laughs> you uh, hang up the phone and <laughs> get back to work. I don't know. Like, it's not time to bail already. And the Bill Belichick, uh, Bill Belichick's value to a team, I don't know, is about quarterback development. And I guess maybe you could argue that he could help um, um, Trevor Lawrence mature to a point where he doesn't have to make all these big plays. But Bill Belichick is a defensive mastermind, and I don't think it's time to move on. Is it? Are you going to do that with every team every week? That's yep. that's the move. Yeah, that, that's the yes, joke. Yes, yeah, 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 that's the yeah, joke. Yeah. Dallas would be the, the strong pick today. Dallas, like that. Uh, you know, that one makes a lot of sense. Maybe Dallas. Baltimore. I mean, Cincinnati. You maybe never know. Baltimore. Uh, enough of John Harbaugh. Someone win with Lamar Jackson. It hasn't been John Harbaugh. I mean, you have a two-time <laughs> MVP, and Harbs has done. Nothing with Lamar Jackson. There are some numbers. Belichick would win 10 Super Bowls there, with that There are guy. some numbers with Baltimore. Baltimore loses more 10-point leads oh, in the oh. fourth quarter than any team in the league. Lamar, th this is the first time they're 0-2 since 2015, Stugat. This is the first time a reigning MVP is 0-2, excuse me, since uh, it's been like 22 years since a reigning MVP started 0-2. That organization does not start 0-2. That was a weird one to lose to the, motor, uh, the motorcycle gang of Minshew and Cross. Be. Yeah, they, they lost to Minshew last year when he was a quarterback of the Colts. Another one like this is it feels like a thing that shouldn't be for the Ravens, but they are the team that gives up these inexplicable late game losses. They did it multiple times last year. And you think that a team that runs the ball as well as they can and plays defense as well as they do should be able to put games away. But they've never been able to do that in recent Lamar Jackson history, which like it feels really inexplicable. The game yesterday was a lot about penalties um, and the interior of the Ravens offensive line not being able to hold up. And Mar Jackson d brings out his heroics, his heroics every now and then, but it wasn't enough in this game. Uh, Stugat, you're firing Harbaugh. That is the first time in three years that <laughs> Lamar Jackson has lost back-to-back -back games. It's the first time in three years. Hmm. Dominique, uh, are the Saints an actual good team? How do you explain the way the Cowboys lost on, on a day when Dak throws for almost 300 yards at home? I think yeah, I think the explanation for the Cowboys loss is kind of tied in with the explanation um, in the like maturation of modern offenses um, or excuse me, modern modern defenses is the Cowboys are built to be a team that is out there to stop the pass and they can't stop the run. And that's one of the like fundamental things about football. And I think more teams will start to uh, kind of pivot towards that. We get smaller, more athletic bodies out there. And they have some, they've had some issues with like the nose tackle position, or I guess the defensive tackle position. Um, and they've tried to address them. But I think this team wants to be in place best with a lead. And that's how they're built. And if you get a big lead out against them, they're going to kind of wither. And that's, been consistently what's happened to them last year, how they lost the games they lost last year and how they ended their season last year and their regular season game losses last year. In this game, it was the same situation. They get behind early. They have one outstanding playmaker in CD lamb. Um, they don't run the ball particularly well, and they can't top, stop the other team from running the ball that well. You can't win in the NFL. Forget the NFL. You can't win in any sport. If you can't run the ball and you can't stop the run. Ready? League, not any sport. I guess if you can't run the ball, you could probably do pretty well in basketball, right? Uh, so yeah. Stugatz has just handed me a note that Adam Schefter is reporting that Pacheco is out on injured reserve fibula at least uh, four weeks. Yesterday during the game, and some of these guys came back, but there was literally a three-minute period. I'm not kidding where, where this Where everyone happened. got hurt? Well, it's Justin Herbert's in a tent. Uh, Justin Jefferson is limping back to the locker room. Kittle. Nick Bosa is out, and Kittle was just cramps. Uh, it is week two 
and the Jets play three times in 11 days. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. I'm on this Miami show where, I mean, injury is not a conversation that uh, anybody wants to have in Miami, particularly with that quarterback. But, like, are we surprised? Like, football and MMA, these are these are the sports where it's like, yeah, this is going to happen. And we've all come to grips with it. We've accepted it. It is what it is. We're going to go tell a bunch of personal stories next week about how much we love everybody. We want them to be healthy, and we wish the game wasn't violent. But we're going to watch this, this all over again next weekend. Well, I have, I have a theory here I want to run by you, Dom, because I really haven't seen the outpouring that I saw for Tua from former players or a current coach before. And my theory is that uh, the way that uh, Tua is being concussed uh, has the feeling of a helpless infant in it when you look at what is happening with his hands. And so you get Antonio Pierce. Now, again, he coaches a motorcycle gang, a historic <laughs> mo motorcycle yeah. gang. Crosby, I mean, that human being would be scary anywhere in the earth he were roaming, okay? And uh, here's Antonio Pierce saying, unbelievably, I thought, a, a very tough football player, yeah, Tua needs to retire now. I'll be honest, I'll it's not worth it. It's not worth to play the game. I, I, I haven't witnessed anything like I've seen that's happened to him three times. Um, scary. You can see right away the players' faces on the field. You can see the sense of urgency from everybody to get uh, to a help. Um, I just think at some point, you know, he's going to live longer and he's going to play football. Take care of your family. <laughs> stunned. I was really stunned to hear an active coach say that, Dom. It's not something I've seen before. Yeah, it's, it's pretty shocking. Um and he, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to say that when your livelihood is not tied up in it. I'm, I'm sure Mike McDaniel is, um, is probably listening to that, like, man, mind your business. I need that quarterback. Um, but I do think that it's the, the shocking part. And the, the, I think the, one of the more difficult things for me when I hear these conversations is we actually don't know if it's the, like, major concussion hits or just the, like, the accumulation of, like, sub-concussive episodes that leads to... Uh, the long-term like health impact. So while the Tua stuff is shocking and it's obviously not healthy for him, there are a lot of other players who are doing things every weekend that are just less egregious that particularly on the offensive line where every offensive defensive line, every single play they're banging heads and like, it's going to take a toll on them through the course of their careers. And there are, I guess we have better ways to identify the issues that um, players have had, and we've taken measures to adjust the game and adjust the practices to try to help out um, long-term prospects for all of the players' health. But we won't know about how this is working for 10, 20, 30 years to see the impact on those players. So, I mean, obviously, the, the reaction for everyone is to be as cautious as possible with someone else's life and career, but uh, we're not in that situation. We're not that player. We're not that person. But h how do you feel about the instant uh, admonishing that he should retire from people who really have no uh, solid opinion? They're not. You've got strong opinions on this. Well, you I, sound. I can feel the indignance rising up. Well, in his you. opinion is people should stop giving their opinion on whether or not a man should stop, retire. Stop right. telling Greg Cody's beloved quarterback and the only hope he's had at the position in 25 <laughs> years to retire. He's yeah. a homer. I would say, and this, he wants him to keep playing. I would say this on behalf of any concussed quarterback in the entire league. Shut the bleep up and let the man make his own decision about his own career and future. Let. Let Tua and his family and his trusted doctors in a room make that decision. Another they, NFL coach should not be speaking about what another team's quarterback should or shouldn't do with his life. I'm just curious how you feel about that. I thought it was awful of Antonio Pierce to, to go on the record saying another team's quarterback should retire. Just unspeakably bad. Yeah, I don't love um, one team's coach speaking on another team's quarterback, but I think we are going to speculate. Like, it's going to happen. And no one is actually going to force the hand of Tua. Like, yeah, people are going to say that he should retire. I don't have a problem with that. If that's what you think you're doing, if, if you think that you're trying to protect someone, I don't have a problem with that. No one's actually stopping him from making a decision. The question that, that popped up in my head when he had another one of these big, primetime, uh, isolated, and ugly concussions was – what is the league going to do? Like, are they going to make a call? Are they going to step in? Because the real fear, let's be honest, the, uh, 
I don't think anyone is actually super concerned about Tua's long-term prospects. Like, I think him and his family are concerned about it. I'm not sure that any of us on the outside, I think we say we are, but our behavior has suggested that we aren't actually considering how, what we know about this game and other players. However, Oh, you're just saying liability. Know. You're just talking about liability yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, not even liability as much as it is what happens on the field. I think that is the, the thing that we all want to avoid, whether we're being um, completely honest about it or not. I don't think all of us are worried about how Tua is going to feel 30 years from now. I think more of us are worried about um, what's going to happen on the field if this keeps happening to him on the field. Like, I think that's what scares us more than anything else because a slow deterioration into, um, into some sort of CTE effects is not, I mean, it, it, it's proven to us that that's not something that's going to get an actual reaction out of us. Something like on the field, what happened with DeMar Hamlin and what happened with Tua, like that's what gets us upset. That's what makes us uncomfortable when it's slammed in our face how how brutal this game can be. I think what Greg's trying to get to and Dominique is tiptoeing around is they are afraid of what's going to happen on the field when this team gets rolling. They have Odell who hasn't played yet. They finally have Tua with a contract. They have Janu Smith now in the mix. Right. They're afraid of the Dolphins and Tua getting things going, so they're trying to force him out of the league, and it's despicable. 